everyone. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we join together this morning and continue our Lenten journey, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who reward the merits of the just, and offer pardon to sinners who do penance. Have mercy, we pray, on those who call upon you, that the admission of our guilt may serve to obtain your pardon for our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I answer you. On the day of salvation, I help you. And I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to restore the land and allot the de desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out to those in darkness, show yourselves, Along the ways they shall find pasture, on every bare height shall their pastures be. They shall not hunger or thirst, nor shall the scorching wind or the sun strike them. For he who pities them leads them and guides them beside springs of water. I will cut a road through all my mountains and make my highways level. See. Some shall come from afar, others from the north and the west, and some from the land of Syene. Sing out, O heavens, and rejoice, O earth. Break forth into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and shows mercy to his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant? be without tenderness for the child in her womb. Even should she forget, I will never forget you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. 
Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus answered the Jews, My father is at work until now, so I am at work. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also called God his own father, making himself equal to God. Jesus answered and said to him, said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, the Son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For what he does, the Son will all do also. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, so that you may be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so also does the Son give life to whomever he wishes. Nor does the Father judge anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and will not come to condemnation, but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so also he gave to the Son the possession of life in himself. And he gave him power to exercise judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, because the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out, those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life but those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of condemnation. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just. But I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, you know, our Lord's at it again, stirring up trouble. And he gets into pretty significant hot water here because he's challenging those in front of him. As, as they say, they're looking to kill him. Because not only has he broken the Sabbath, but he's taken it one step further. He has equated himself on the same level as God calling him his own father. Pretty intense. Unless he can back it up. And sure enough, dear friends, as we look at the totality of the gospel, he does just that. Over time, the works and uh, miracles of his own life bear witness to the fact that he is who he says he is. He is that son of God. He is the son of man referenced by Daniel in the Old Testament. He is this fulfillment of scripture. And yet, in the midst of his own time, people recognized him not. They were as close as you and I are to one another right now, and they just couldn't see it. But some did. And many, as the scriptures say, came to believe in him. When it comes to our own life and God, dear friends, we're living in, you know, got a kind of similar situation. God is as near to us as possibly can be by the gifts that he has given us through his church. And yet, we can be that close and still miss the boat. We can be so close and miss the boat that he wants us to engage in this gift of life-giving communion with him. 
and yet it's so hard to kind of just allow our hearts to be caught up in what is truly happening. We see it all the time, this kind of going through the motions. We're here, but we're not here. Our minds and hearts may be elsewhere. And again, as we try to live out this Christian life, what happens? Well, it starts to fade to the background that fire of the Holy Spirit that meant, is meant to be burning within gets dimmed to a mere pilot light on a stove and is barely hanging on. How sad it is the world we've entered into. And yet, you're here. On 8 a.m., on a Wednesday morning, in the middle of the week, you decided to get up, walk through these doors, and come to Mass. What does that mean for us, dear friends? It means there is always an opportunity to grow in this depth of love with God because that's what we're made for. We need to hear His voice and live by it prominently. And this is where our life of daily prayer really must become even more and more deepened as we make our way along our Christian journeys. Because the fact of the matter is, life short. And our Lord illustrates it in the end of the gospel today when he says there's going to be a resurrection to life, but then there's also going to be a resurrection of condemnation. It's exactly what he says in Matthew 25 when he talks about the sheep and the goats. One's going off to the resurrection of life, the other's going off to that other resurrection because of the fact that we're going to either be with God or eternally separated from Him. We're either going to be in communion with our Lord, who is the giver of life, or we're going to be in isolation, almost if we, to use that image of Dante in the, uh, in the Inferno, like the enemy encased in ice because they're so turned in on the self. I'm hoping, and I'm just going to go on a whim here, that you're kind of leaning towards one side of the world rather than the other, and that's that side of life. Amen? Amen? Okay. But now, our words not just backing it up, but our actions. And when we fail and have our moments, because granted, we look at our lives, we all have them, do we seek the reconciliation we need to begin again in His mercy and continue to have Him work on our hearts to draw us closer closer and closer. The way forward, dear friends, is to continue to place ourselves in that holy presence of God. It starts with the yes that brought you here this morning, that it brought you into the church, that gives you this time of communion with God, and then it goes on to the gifts that are meant to surround it and support it. Namely, your prayer, Mass and the sacraments, and your self-giving and self-denial in all the ways that they're meant to manifest. All together, these things support that yes constantly to draw us deeper in to that love of God that we are made for. And again, it sounds cliche, but it's like, what else is there? What else are we going to latch on to? What else do we truly desire? What is it that thing that's become like almost the golden calf in our life, this attachment that we kind of hold on to? For each of us, it varies and differs and even changes throughout the course of our lives. We're made for so much more, though. And not only is it about us making that journey and everything that comes with it, but it's about the fact that since we're here, we're meant to go and take the gifts and the love and the grace we've received and to share it with others. This is what it means to live those two great commandments. To love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And your neighbor as yourself. To go beyond ourselves because we are so pulled in by that love of God. But we need desperately, desperately, for the Lord to work in the depth of our heart. And to allow Him to surface those things, those obstacles that are there that need to be turned over to him. So the question is, dear friends, 
What do we desire to do? What do we want? Make no mistake. The love that the Lord is talking about in today's gospel between him and the Father and ultimately extending to the Holy Spirit this eternal exchange of love that exists in the Holy Trinity that the Catechism speaks of, we are destined for. We are made for it. A love that does not end. A love that is infinite. A love that goes deeper. But if we're just going to turn away and do our own thing and not and just try to make it our, our own thing here, friends, we're never going to go very far. It must be us surrendering into his hands to be led to go deeper. Not always easy. But then again, it never is, is it? To say to the Lord, as our Blessed Mother does, thy will be done. To say to the Lord, as our Blessed Mother does, be it done unto me according to thy word. And ultimately to say to Our Lady, if we've consecrated ourselves to her, to say, bring me to your son and help me to be an instrument in your hands for the upbuilding of the kingdom. All of it requires to say, your will, not mine. And I don't know about you, but there are some days where I kind of want to go, no, my will, not yours. Not because I desire it necessarily in here, but because there's still that ongoing conversion that's happening in the heart. For all of us as we continue this Lenten journey and head on towards this upcoming celebration of Easter, let's let the Lord take us another step deeper into that holy communion beyond all telling. Confident in our Lord and Savior, let us, let us bring our prayers before him this day, that we may not resort to judging those around us, but adopt a spirit of compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those seeking full communion into the church, be filled with hope and receive encouragement from their faith communities, we pray to the Lord. Those who struggle with anger may find peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our differences in race, culture, and language remind us that God calls all nations to dwell in the house of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick and suffering, especially from the darkness of depression, be filled with the grace of the Spirit's healing power, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died may find joy and peace, resting in Christ Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our As we lift up Bill Bailey in the prayer of this liturgy, let us also offer up our own prayers to the Lord in the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our God of heavenly power, strengthen us, draw us, and help our hearts to be attuned to your will for our lives, that we may be the holy instruments in the hands of the Lord through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, and lift up all those entrusted to our care closer to you, who you have an eternal love for, that you wish to draw all into the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For the divine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your name, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. We look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, 
once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, for our faithful merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. With him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. On you stay, we toll is peccata mundi, miserere Stay. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon. God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May your heavenly gifts, O Lord, we pray, which you bestow as a heavenly remedy on your people, not bring judgment to those who receive them. Through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May your servants be shielded, O Lord, by the protection of your loving kindness, that doing what is good in this world, they may reach you their highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everyone.